It's episode four. Me and Fruity Eva are going to be live talking about the importance of health and money. And these two things are just the best of both worlds. So, you know, you can have both of these things. It's not just one or the other. We need to kind of rearrange your mindset around these things. So I'm going to go on and we're going to hop on live with Fruity Eva today. We've got Tatiana joining, Chris joining. What's up, everyone? How is your weekend so far? Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. We're going to accept your request. Hey, Eva. Hi, it's so nice to be here. Yeah, yeah, you as well. Definitely. I'm, I'm glad we finally got the live situated. For sure, for sure. And it's so cool, by the way. Hi, Tatiana. Because I, I think you know her and I also know her, which is so cool. Yeah, yeah, small road. Instagram connects us all. Definitely. Sure. How, How was your doing? Saturday? Oh, it was good. It was good. It was good. I was, um, what I was doing, I was uh, surfing and okay. I was working a little bit. And yeah, so a very nice day. How was your Saturday? I spent it working all day <laughs> from like morning to night. Yeah. Uh, where do you surf? I'm curious. It's uh, the Canary Islands and the there's Canary one island, uh, Gran Canaria, and they have um, a beach right at the city. So I live there and yeah, I can just go and yeah. I think it's not, it's not, you cannot compare it to Hawaii, but for Europe, it's quite good, I think. So yeah, I mean, happy. no need to compare. I mean, Hawaii is good in its own things, but I'm sure the Canary Islands is, are as well. Oh, so you and Tatiana met. Okay, cool. At the Fruit Fest, I'm assuming, UK Fruit Fest. And that, you the UK Fruit yeah. Nice, nice, nice. What stock's coming up? <laughs> maybe oh, maybe you guys would come over to to the mainland, New York. I would love to. Like I've never been to Woodstock, but it's definitely a goal of mine because it seems to be such an amazing event. So mm. yeah. Awesome. So the way I like to go about these things is, um, you know, clearly we have the topic between health and money, and perhaps we can start with just like brief introductions about ourselves, and then kind of you know, flow into the topic ideas, whether that's if you want to talk about health or money first, you know, we'll kind of just flow into that. So would you like to like give off a little brief introduction about yourself? Sure, I would love to do that. So I'm Eva. I'm originally from Germany. And right now I'm living on the Canary Islands. And I'm on this fruit based journey for four years. And vegan for six and vegetarian for night so it's been a while and it's definitely like all of that has so changed my mind and my life and um, like so many i think when you improve your health or when you change one aspect of your life it will automatically transform other areas of your life as well so yeah it's been definitely a huge 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 blessing to my life to go fruit based and vegan how long and have you been fruit based for i'm almost four years Four years, nice. Yeah, yeah, it's like definitely one of the best things happening to me, and I'm so grateful. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I I've, I've kind of been um. Well, you've been vegetarian for nine years. Oh, what's up? Uh, what's up, son? Yeah, thanks for joining in, man. And really, I, I I can you read that what she wrote? I have no idea. No. No, okay. <laughs> Sorry, English, please, <laughs> or or other languages that Ava may speak. Um, no, definitely, yeah, I I agree as well with the fruit base. I think that's I think that's kind of how we connected through the whole fruit base diet, uh, and I think we kind of just you know resonated more even with the fact that we both share entrepreneur mindsets and we both care about the importance of money, and and I think we can both agree to that. And if you guys are joining then I'm sure maybe you guys have some, you know, resemblance of like, oh, you know what, maybe health and money is important. You know, one thing that I hear people say is health is wealth. 
as a way for healthy people. And don't get me wrong, like I totally understand where they're coming from. But when people say health is wealth, I see it as a way to, to, to get them off the hook for not actually being financially wealthy. You know, and, and it's like, I think they're just kind of like doing themselves like a, 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 bad, a bad deed by saying that. Like, I, I get it, health, health is so important. But, you know, you know where I'm coming from? I agree so much. And I think you said once that health is health and wealth is wealth. And I agree so much with that because why not have both? I mean, wealth is so important. And for me, wealth, if you, if you don't have money, you are not really that healthy because in order to be healthy and to get good food, etc., I mean, you have to have money. So for me, it goes hand in hand. And my dad as well, he always said it's better to be rich and healthy than to be poor and sick. And some people say, I mean, obviously it makes sense, but a lot of people, they say, oh, you know, as long as I'm healthy or as long as I'm not sick, everything is fine. But why, why be satisfied if you can have wealth and food? So yeah. why do you want to have both? Yeah, like you can have both. You know, it's like people think it's one or the other when in fact, like, no, you, you, the, you, you, the world is yours. You can, the world is in the palm of your hands. You can choose, you can be, I see like the world as like this, this awesome uh, five-star rated movie and you are the director and you are the main character and you are every person that puts that movie together. Like you design it, it's yours. And so if you want to be healthy and wealthy, all means, all to you. I agree. I agree so much. And what I think it's everything is connected because so many beliefs um, that you have to change when you go vegan or when you want to eat healthier also apply to, for example, money. Because I think, a, for example, a huge aspect is taking responsibility. And if you realize that you can take responsibility over your health and what you eat, you can also take responsibility over your finances or over your career. And you can actually, for example, create a business that you enjoy. And you, mm -hmm. I think taking responsibility is it, so important. It influences yeah. the type of business that you start in, too, I, I, I think. Like, I, if you're I, a healthy I, individual, then I think the business that you're going to pursue is, I'm assuming, somewhat aligned with your healthy endeavors. Like, uh, for, for sure. For sure. I believe that also. Yeah. So, and, yeah. and Tatiana made a good point too, like, you know, asking the question like, oh, so if you're a fruit-based vegan, does that mean you can't do business anymore? And that kind of triggered something me, like, because I remember me just getting into the fruit-based thing and then I was, you know, being, uh, well, how do I, like kind of judged by others who weren't fruit-based. But when mm -hmm. in the fruit-based community, I feel like I would get judged the same way but when i talk about money when i talk about wanting to like build wealth and you know because a lot of people in these communities they see that as an evil thing like they see that as like oh that's not righteous that's like you know that's not something that a righteous person should be pursuing like and and i i felt and i felt yeah i felt pressure from from both ends I agree so much and I think in the end money is just a tool and with money you can create so much you can I mean of course improve your business you can reinvest in your business you can reinvest in yourself and in the end you can help more people I think the goal is to help people and to also have an amazing life yourself so you want to have a balance but with money you can do so many things and I think people have to realize that money can be incredible awesome for you to live an amazing life and help a lot more people, a lot more people. So yeah, I think money's money's so 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 good. And I think it's sad that some people think that money is evil or something when it's not. It's an amazing tool for you to help people and live a good life. I, I like to think too that like, because <clears throat> I was chatting, not really chatting, but somebody had commented on an Instagram post, um, and they made this long description of how to save money as a fruit based you know vegan and it was just see it seemed so detailed and complex you know just like buying things on sale you know waiting for things to go up on deals asking the cashier to ask the manager to see if things are you know going bad like all these things to put you out of your way just to save a few bucks it's like what kind of mentality is that that's not an abundant mentality way of thinking 
I would rather focus my, my, my attention and focus and energy in towards making an abundance of money instead of saving dollars. I'd rather focus on making money than saving money because of more money than I have options. I, I agree so much. I agree so much with that. I think it's so important to focus on earning money. And what I love so much also about money, it gives you freedom. Because yeah. when you have money, as you said, you have options. And I think I don't understand because in the fruit-based community, I think people really want freedom. They want to break uh, out of the system. So why not also <coughs> try to get more money so that you have even more freedom? Because, mm. yeah, I don't know. Tatiana says, thanks for the comments, Tatiana. She's super engaged. Um, yeah, she says, you know, she can buy and support vegan businesses through her business. And her business isn't directly, um, I, I think she's, I don't, I, I can't say, I can't say myself, but um, yeah, like, you know, even she has her, she has her own food and business and the money that that generates goes into supporting the things that she has you know value in and and i can resonate with that too for say i'm flipping houses right now you know and that isn't necessarily eco-friendly or um very you know it's in a construction work site meaning it, it's not the healthiest environment you're breathing in dust you're, you know maybe you know yeah. you're <laughs> cement particles and all these things and i get it but the money that this is going to generate from flipping houses is gonna buy me pieces of land in the tropics so I can fund for fruit trees and fruit shop, you know, community shelters and all these things. So yeah, it's about, you know, using your your ways of money as, you know, stepping stones. Like don't don't be upset on, or don't get unmotivated if your the 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 first way you start working for yourself isn't necessarily aligned with your values. Like and not not to say like, you know, do something wrong, but you're not going to land in the perfect situation like right off the bat. Um, use where you are now as a stepping stone. I, I agree so much with that because when I started my company, I think what people don't realize is when you start a company, usually it takes investment and time for you to get money from it. So what I did to kind of um, finance myself and my business was to get a job at the bakery just because it was right in my village and did i like it no but it, i think it really helped me first of course to get money and second also yeah. it really helped me to understand okay what is it that i want and is this business really something that i want to create and because i didn't like that job at the bakery at all it really helped me to focus on my business and to focus okay what what do we want do we want to be self-employed in future and the answer was yes. <laughs> so I, yeah, I think I think also I think you have to, as you said, just start with what you have. Be resourceful. And yeah, I think that's and important. And what what field of business would you do? I would love like I'm creating an online business about veganism and raw food. I would love to help people to become healthier, to realize the benefits of raw food and vegan or fruit based lifestyle. I do coaching and I want to create recipe ebooks, but I'm start, but I'm just starting and I'm just yeah. getting. So I just have like um, coachings, but it's not um, where it's not yet where I want it to be in the future. But yeah, I, I mean, I have a vision. I I want to get there, and it's not. I'm not doing it full time because I'm still studying. But I want to do it full time in the future, for sure. That's good. It seems like it excites you. Like you're you're looking forward for the future, you know. Like uh, yeah, you're yeah. looking forward for where this is gonna get you. Ah, uh, for sure, for sure. I I love it. I I think what I love about business is that it's so versatile. There's so many things that that you can learn. I love to learn. So there's so many things that you can learn, and it just goes on, and goes on, and there's so many opportunities. And also, you can stay scale your money and that's just something that I think is so fascinating because if you work for a company or if you're employed you get uh, this amount of money per hour but if you start your business you can be so creative with the ways that you make money and also for example I was part of the Robin bundle and it's so interesting how you can make money and you can scale it 
just by doing things that you love and I love it. I love it. Definitely. So going into starting your business seems like recently um yeah do you want to talk about like perhaps like the the, the, sh the struggle is like it, it's obviously different than like you know working your job and then getting a steady paycheck that's guaranteed at the end of the week like you know you it, it's almost like um i'm not commission based but it's based off of you like how much how much efforts can you put if you don't put any efforts into your business then you know obviously the the payoff will, will show for it but you know you're doing the raw vegan bundle you're doing coaching. I like that you mentioned that you're helping people. Like as soon as I actually what you do, you help people. And, and that's, that's what it's about. It's about providing value to people through either a product or a service. And, you know, it, the, 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 I feel like the number of, of dollars in our bank account or in our pockets are equivalent mm -hmm. to the amount of value that we bring. I, I agree so much. I think if you look at the people who have the most money, most of them have created so much value to people. For example, Amazon. Mm -hmm. If you like Amazon or not, you cannot deny the fact that Amazon has revolutionized the system how you can go shopping. And I mean, for me, it's just if you see, or I don't know, Bill Gates, they have, or uh, Mark Zuckerberg, they have changed the world and they have given so much value to people and that's why they have a lot of money and of course there are exceptions but a lot of people have just gained a lot of money because they provided so much value and yeah and about the the first part of your question i definitely yeah. think about the struggles of entrepreneurship that you have to get a different mindset and i think that's really really it, it takes time especially for me um, because, for example, in school you you learn because you have an because you want to pass the exam and then you get result for the exam. So you just do something because you get something back. And it's the same if you're an employee, you work because per hour you get uh, this amount of money. But when you go and you want to start your business, you have to rethink and you have to change your mindset a lot because first of all you have to put in a lot of value and a lot of effort and create a lot of value for people before you can see any returns. And if you start a business, it's often like this, like it's exponential growth. So in the beginning, the first years, you really have to invest and you have to understand that it takes time for people to recognize your business or just to, I don't know, get recognition or get money. It really takes time and really have to invest in the beginning. And that can be really hard for some people because they, they come from this employee mindset that when, I, when they put in work, they see immediate results. But it's not like that. You really have to put in the work and 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 then you see results. But then it's exponential. And that's also what I saw from the raw vegan bundle. And um, when I, for example or when I sold some eBooks, I got money, even though I was not working, I was sleeping. And then I, in the morning, I looked at my phone and I was like, oh, you know, I make money. But right. what I have to realize is that before I put more work into my business to, for example, grow my following on YouTube or Instagram. And so it's, so you have to realize that you get money, not for, or you get money, but later and it's not like immediate return so yeah i think that's just one mindset that you have to change that you first have to give you first have to create value mm. and mm. then you can ask for a return mm. yeah yeah like hmm, it's like better on yourself you know like for example yesterday saturday i had to pay the guys i paid everyone but myself like you got to be okay with working weeks on months on end without receiving pay. Cause when you're building, when you're fixing up your own house, you know, who's going to pay you, you know, you're the one that's actually spending the money's coming out of you. So, but long-term in mind, or not even long-term, like mid to long-term, um, I know that the rents are going to be coming in and then all of that is hundred percent is going to me. So you got to be able to, you know, withstand months on months without, you know, perhaps any pay or little to no pay because, you know, you know, you got to be a visionary as well. Like, you know, you mentioned looking into the future. And so that's what entrepreneurship is about is, is looking at the mid to long term, you know, taking bits of sacrifices here, you know, more sacrifice up to you. But 
Um, definitely. Like, that's why I also really like, you know, like to compare, you know, with a farmer because a farmer wouldn't plant a seed if he didn't believe in the day of tomorrow. A farmer is a visionary. A farmer, when he plants that seed, he sees pumpkins already and like he knows how big they're going to grow. So he plants the seeds several inches or feet apart, you know, and same with starting your business. You have to be able to uh, at least not, you know, you got to have a, a, an idea, a, a, a clear direction of what path or, you know, what, what kind of numbers you want to make, what kind of value, you know, you got to have clarity in that sense. For sure, for sure. It really really takes time it takes time but what i think is so interesting is that you are in um i don't know how to say in real estate because my family is also in real estate and it's so interesting because i was when i grew up i was not interested because it's hard work and like physical work and i'm not much into that but i really love the financial aspect of it it's mm. it's really, really interesting to yeah so yeah. How, how, like how, how did you get into it because i'm so interested how did you start with your real estate definitely um so throughout my high school i even, i even felt like late middle school my dad i think he bought his first property maybe when i was like in eighth grade and since he since he's bought that property um i would go ahead and help him on weekends every weekend you know we i'd help him on a saturday maybe on a sunday if he needed help he was just starting off It took him about a few months to finish his property. But every weekend I was out there helping him throughout early high school years. My uncle was also starting the real estate thing. And my uncle was very ambitious. He's a, he's a go-getter. He went in and went in hard and was dedicated to his field. And he, you know, you know, accumulated lots of rental properties. And within, what, seven years or six, seven years of him being in that business, I, I asked him, like, how much he makes. And how much he made was worth more than uh, the salary of what a doctor makes in a year. Yeah. And you know how long it takes to be a doctor in USA? Eight years. He was in business for seven years and now was making more than a doctor. And the difference is that he is going to make that money regardless if he shows up to work or not because it's passive income now. It's rental properties, cash flowing in. Whereas a doctor has to put on the uniform, still be you know, of service to it's to his or her job and has to work a full-time job to make that income so it just didn't make sense to me like how can the highest most prestigious job field in all of university not make as much as my uncle my uncle what he had was well, he had ambition he had direction he had a drive and i could see these qualities in me as well so once i um i was actually applying for colleges and universities And I just kind of made that, you know, connection. I was like, you know what? I want to pursue real estate. I want to be like my uncle. And I decided not to go to university. I like said no to the, um, what were they giving me? Like when they pay for your university, I forget what it's called, but yeah, they're like paying for it. And I declined it. And my mom was super upset. My mom was like super upset. Like she was like, all right, well you better start working day one once you like graduated. So I started working with my dad for an entire year, right after high school, I just worked with him for an entire year, minimum pay. I was a labor man. I was tired. I had no days off. You know, I wanted to ask for a day off to hang out with my friends on the weekend because it was summer and my dad would just pressure me. And like, I was pressured, you know, into like working hard. And I guess that's why it kind of molded yeah. me into who I am now. And, uh, and yeah, and then, okay. So one year later, I saved up enough money which was only, and I'll tell you right off, it's only $4,000 I think I saved up. Within a year, I had saved up you know, four or $5,000. Once I had that money in, in my bank, I went ahead and, and I approached my uncle. You know what, uncle, like, the reason why I didn't go to university, you had a big influence on that. I seen you and your accomplishments and all the real estate that you do, and I want to follow in those same footsteps. And I'm actually doing that. Like, my, my dream is to buy my first house. And he was very touched by that. He was moved. And the next morning he had sent me a property address and I looked at my messages and it had some random property address. And, I, and then he called me and he said, Hey, did you see that property? It was like, uh, yeah, what's it for? He's like, Oh, good news. I can sell you that property for a good, uh, for a discounted price. And I was like, Whoa. And he was offering to finance it for me, meaning I could just pay him a, um, a down deposit. And he will, and I, as long as I pay him a monthly basis on the 
rest of the, the house, what I owe, then we're on a deal. So long story short, I, we agreed. Um, I was at the signing table. I had my first property, my paper that said I was this new homeowner and me, my dad, and we started fixing up the property. And all of a sudden I just had so much money coming out of me. And I was like, Oh my God, like, I never would, I never spent, you know, a thousand dollars in a day. I never spent $5,000 in a week, but that, that first two months that I was doing it, all this money was just pouring out, but I knew every money coming out was an investment for my future. And, and it's paying off to this day. Like it, thankfully, you know, we got long-term renters and it's, it's been very fruitful. Um, but it started because I had the clarity. I had the vision in mind and I expressed myself to my uncle. If I never expressed myself to my uncle, I probably would have still been saving up for that first property. You know, like, the fact that he offered me owner's financing, he was able to finance that property for me as long as I paid him a, a balance every month, then, you know, and, 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 and I encourage you guys too. And if it's not real estate, express your goals, express who to the people who it is that you look up to because they can sure as well help you. You know, we're all, you know, humble people here and you want to help one another. I think that's what being a decent human being is about. And my uncle did that for me. So um, the opportunity is everywhere. You just got to like express it. Uh, I like, I think it's so fascinating. I agree so much and a really great story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and so, yeah, that, that's how I kind of got started. Um, and yeah, just seeing like the fruitful, you know, income coming from it. I was like, you know, this is just the first of many and after that it's kind of just repeat but like the first one was very tough not not super super oh, yeah. tough but like i was just learning still i thought i knew a lot of the house flipping thing but i didn't hire any major contractor like you know it was me with the skills that i had at the time and learning as we go like i was in this you know everything all 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 you know how to do it all our contractor like literally learning as we we were going i learned so many skills while fixing up that first property i learned so much and yeah i guess that kind of ties into not waiting for the perfect moment as well i love that i love that and i think that's so cool and that's something that i don't like about university or school is you learn and you learn and you study and you learn but you never apply it so in the end you forget and that's so cool about for example Google is uh, that I learn and I apply it and then I realize it and then I, I don't know, I get it. So I think that's so cool to learn on the go. But mm -hmm. yeah, but now I feel super inspired to also learn a bit more about real estate because my family is in real estate and I always saw the, the negative sides of it because as children, we always went to houses to fix a fence or to paint or something and I did not like it. But yeah. now, as I get a little bit more older, I realize the benefits of actually having a property, not only rent, but also long term. I mean, you own the property and you gain equity. I don't know how to say in English, but yeah, I think there's so many benefits about it. Um, yeah, it's, and, it's and, it, and it goes down to providing value, you know, Again, to, yeah. because you're providing yeah. a, a home for a family like how yes. valuable is that? You're providing shelter for a family where they can sleep at night, they can have Thanksgiving dinner, Christmas night, like literally a, a roof over their heads. You turned a, a, a piece of trash property that was once was into this, you know, modern looking apartment that is now housing a family. And that's what it comes down to as well as, you know, being a visionary, looking into these dirty old properties, looking into, um, you know, whatever it is but just turning it flipping it you know and making uh like just dirt into gold you know you're the alchemist you're the alchemist of it all like you can turn those ideas into such fruitful abundance you can you can turn anything into whatever it is you wish to wish to have for sure for sure no it's amazing i think it's about giving value just give and learn yeah, but definitely one thing that I wanted to say about sacrifice, because that's another thing. If you want to create your business, uh, you have to make certain sacrifices. And uh, that's really important. You have to invest in your business. You have to invest time. And 
I mean, it's for me what I've learned. It's important to um, realize your needs and accept them and spend time with friends and family because that's something that I didn't do when I first started my business. I was so obsessed with it and I was like working all the time and I was not making time for like friends, family and I got super, super, super depressed and it was really bad. So I think it's really important to realize your needs. Okay, what is it that I need? And of course, eat healthy and all of that. But also really important, let go of ego. And that's something that I'm still working on so much is to let go of limiting beliefs because in the end what really matters is not your fears but it's the value that you create and the product that you create and for example i was so scared to go on lives or to do videos mm. but it's still something that you have to get rid of because yeah. you want to help people you want mm. to create a valuable product and so just let go of ego a bit to serve uh, people definitely yeah yeah and you know I I would never go on live before. Now it's like a regular thing for me. Now I do it a few times a week and now I post every day. And, you know, these are things that I wasn't used to just two weeks ago. I just started doing these things and I realized how important it is to express yourself, how important it is. I used to like not, I used to despise social media, but now I see it as such an opportunistic way for me to grow my outreach. You, Fruity Eva, you, everyone else watching this right now too, you have a special message and you can inspire people, you can move people just by opening your mouth and speaking your mind and talking about your story, where you were, how you got there, where you are now, where you're going, just by putting the camera out there and speaking your mind and expressing yourself, you can inspire and move a lot of people. So me, I, I need to grow my outreach because I want to influence and, and inspire and help as many people as I can. So. I want to grow my outreach. I, I want to have, you know, I want to be that multi-millionaire because if I'm, I have a multi, I have multi-million dollars in my bank to my name, I know that I've touched the lives of multi-millions of people, you know? So, you know, the, the equivalence between money and the amount of lives that you've changed are, are very, very like, you know, par and par. And, um, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to keep on going on this Instagram thing and the social media and, I like that you mentioned um, well the sacrifice thing too because mm, like I, I have like iffy thoughts about that because like I feel like sometimes we should go all in. There's times for that. The, it depends per person like what kind of pace do you want to you know function and run at. Um, yeah. Others perhaps you know need you know a weekend off or you know a, a sleep like honestly. Um, I take naps throughout the middle of the day <laughs> and I used to like not like that at all but like I feel like I once I set my guys there they're working everything's running I, I literally go to the house and I take a nap not every day but when I need it I, I remind myself of that like I, I need to take a nap because it's it's like investing in my health and and I get a good return on it because once I take an hour nap in the middle of the day I wake up with so much energy I can stay up later that night and get more work done you know, like today, for example, I'm, I'm doing like a little fruit luck and I'm going to meet, meet, be meeting with like other, you know, fruit based people, vegan people who want to come to the park and eat some fruit under the sunshine. And that to me is part of the balance between health and money. Yesterday, I worked like what, a 16, 18 hour day. Today, it's just pretty, you know, chill. I'm going to the park. We're going to eat some fruit and durian like you know, and so that's what I talk about also. Like, you're in control of your life. You can set those rules, you know, for yourself. I agree. I agree so much. I think that balance is important. But that's also what I think. I think when, when you start your business and you love what you do, it feels so much better. And you don't, like, I feel ful fulfilled doing mm. it. And so, of course, like, relationships, etc., cetera, is, is important. Um, but it's not something that I, like, I'm not, ah, oh, 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 like, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that I'm out of work. Like, for example, when I worked in the bakery, I was, like, always looking at the, at the clock. It's like, oh, no, like, five more minutes, and then I'm finally done, and I can go with friends. And now I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, I really liked my, I like my project that I'm working on. Five more minutes, okay, yes, I really like it. And then, you know, I can go with friends. And I, yeah. I love that you are excited about what you do and for me that's that's so important for me of course it's important to help people 
but it's so important to to do what I love to do and for me that's more important than money than like everything just la- like like fulfillment. fulfillment yeah I love that yeah yeah I, I can I can relate so much you know, like I remember I said also like wait for it to hit five o'clock so like I literally would count down the hours like soon I'd be like 11 a.m. when I was working with my dad I was like oh we only have six more hours three more hours 30 minutes and waiting and like I didn't want to live like that like I now like mm. I, I I squeeze I wish time could slow down a bit because I look you know I look yeah. forward to this Mondays I look forward to you know getting out of bed and that's because you know my, my I find my work fulfilling and no I guess no pressure to those who don't who aren't there yet but you know know that you can be fulfilled by your work like I love work work to me is one of those words that like I love because like just with work you can that's like that's like so empowering you can work towards your goals towards your dreams your ambitions your hopes your desires like it i love that <laughs> me too me too i think it's so i think it's so important and i think it's so sad that there are sometimes people who have already um not forgotten but they gave up on the idea that they can actually do something that i think that they find fulfilling And it's so sad. I mean, it does not matter what age you are. You can, it's, it's never too late. It's really never too late to just start something at the side. And then once you, you can grow it and you can make a business out of it. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, for example, if, if someone is 50 years old or 60 years old, they have still 10 more years that they can, or more, that they can invest into something that they like. Yeah, I don't know. Definitely. And then scrolling back up to Rumsey's comments, he, he talks about, um, you know, he understands sacrificing health for money and then money for health. Um, I want to like ask you like, how, how, what, how do you balance the two throughout, you know, whether that's on a daily basis or a weekly basis how, or monthly, like how do you balance the two? I think it's such a cool question. So I actually am a little bit lucky because my business, is about raw food so when i create mm-hmm. like healthy meals i make pictures and i put them on instagram etc so for me that's good but i would definitely say like what i make a priority is to move my body because i spend so much time in front of the uh, laptop or a computer that i just i need to go for walks and to um you know just move my body it makes and also when you take care of your needs for example sport relationship etc you are such a good like you're a full cup and you can you know you can work so much better be so much more efficient in your business as well so i take care of doing like exercise and do stuff like move my body then i try to meet friends i try to eat healthy and i make like for me uh, eating healthy is a priority because i saw it with my dad because he like worked a lot but he did not really care of his health and now he like mm-hmm. has money but he has no health and so mm-hmm. i see like i love money it's important but health is also important because mm-hmm. now you spend so much money on doctors and all of that oh, yeah. so yeah i think with health also like i think with health It's the same with business. You have like, especially when you're young, you have now the opportunity to invest into your health and in your business. And when you're young, the thing is with your health, you sometimes don't really see it because also maybe your friends are healthy, even though they smoke and uh, take weed and all of that. But 50 years or 20 or 30 years or 10 years in the future, you will see such a big difference. You will see the people who have taken care of their health and the people who have not taken care of their health. And it, I think it's the same with money. Like right now, you might be in the same pot, at least I'm 20, so you might be in the same pot, but in 10, 15, 20 years, there will be such a big difference, I think, with the people who invested and the people who have not invested in their health or money or finances. Mm, mm. Yeah. and. You know, it's not li- limited to any age, but if you are in your 20s, then oh, go for it. Like, man, you got time and money. You, you got time on your side, you know? So you can make these investments, make these long-term investments towards your health, towards your money, your wealth, growing your financial abundance. Um, that's awesome. Thanks.
You're also you're 24, no? Or 25? I, I just turned 25. Yeah. Ah, oh, cool. Happy birthday. When did you turn 25? Um, two, three, two, three days ago, April 15th. Cool. Happy birthday. Thanks. So cool. Thanks. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you're also so young. And I think that's because I thought you would be a bit older because you're like, you know so much. So that's amazing. That you yeah, really I like this. this people say I'm an old soul, which I think I can agree. Um, <laughs> vegan happiness says tips for acne. Maybe, maybe, maybe she knows or maybe she herself is struggling with acne. Um, so I, I have really bad acne years before going into the fruit-based diet and even now and every now i slip up acne comes up again um but tips for acne the way i healed it personally and the way of many people that i know healed their acne naturally the natural way the only way is through eating a fruit-based diet fruit eat a cleaner diet that's more fruit that contains more fruit and drink more water fruit i mean you're you're like eating your water at that point you know you're flushing all these toxins out you're you're alkalizing your body. Your your pH levels are being becoming more alkaline. Um, it, to, just to briefly put it, I'd recommend um, looking into more fruit fruit based diet. That's what helped me. I don't know if you struggled with acne or. I uh, no, I I never really struggled with acne, but I hear it from so acne. many people, my friends. They struggle with acne, and they also tried the fruit based diet, and it really helped. I I think it's it's just. Yeah, it makes sense to care for people. Definitely. Yeah. And cool, cool. So I like kind of the, the topics that we touched on. Would there be something else that, well, does anybody have any questions um, as we're kind of wrapping up here? Um, if not, we can we can wrap, um, I mean, any like on, any, on us, on us there's other things that you want to touch back on, Eva? I would love to one more thing, and that yeah. is something that I wished I knew in the beginning. And that's to have more self-belief uh, that you can actually do it. Because I struggled so much with it, especially if you have, like, also in the, like when I started fruit-based lifestyle, I struggled so much because I didn't have um, belief that I can actually do it or make it, especially with friends or family that are not supportive. And um, so definitely, I don't know, get the, get an affirmation that you can do it and you can yeah. actually achieve what you set your mind to so that you can reprogram your mindset. That's so helpful if you don't have people who support you. That's really, really helpful. Just get your self-belief right. That's really, really Yeah, helpful. I agree. Yeah. Yes. And I would even say, like, reinforce your why, too. Because when motivation is yeah. low, <clears throat> when nobody's buying your product, when you're not seeing results in your health, and you're like, why am I doing this? Why am I being shunned by my friends? Why am I being peer pressured? Why am I like the outcast? You know, this is when you can look into yourself and, 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 and reinforce yourself by knowing your why. Why do you do these things? Why are you pursuing health? Why are you pursuing money? What are you going to do with the money? How do you want to feel with good health? Ask yourself these questions. Close your eyes. And feel the feelings you would be feeling as if you already had these things. How would that feel to you? So tap into those feelings, you know, um, and yeah, re remind yourself of how important it is for, for you pursuing those goals and, and those dreams of yours. Because it's nothing else more important than that. As long as they're righteous goals and, you know, then all to you, then all the best. Um, and that's good. Yay, well, 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 so. Yay, sweet. So if there's no more questions, then I think we'll wrap up. And definitely, this was this was awesome talking about it. I, I definitely do want to have more talks around, you know, health and, and money related, because I just think it's something important, you know, to spread awareness on. There's not many people in the fruit community talking about money, you know, and, mm -hmm. and maybe it's something that you and I can both, you know, shine some light on. I, w I would love to. I love it. Also, before I went for based, I was already like starting my business was my dream. And now I have found something that I'm passionate about. And it's like a great combination. Yeah. So I would love to. I would love to. Definitely. Definitely. And cool. All right. Well, hey, Eva, it was nice chatting with you. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Appreciate your guys' time. Appreciate your time, Eva. Hope you have a good rest of your weekend. 
Oh, thank you so much. You too. And have a good day. All right. Bye. Bye.